Last time on Narrative Tutorials by Decryption. Now last time we made a door where you could walk up to George the doorman and you could ask him to open the door and he'd open the door with a sequence or he'd open it. But what happens if you want to open the door with a key or an object of something? So that's what we're going to look at doing in this tutorial. So first, let's create another dialogue. So I'm just going to go into our narrative folder and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to name it dialogue and I'm going to drop George's dialogue into it so it's all nicely tucked away. And now we've done that, let's create a new dialogue. Right click narrative and dialogue and I'm going to call it DB and we'll call it Eric the Key Requester. And we'll open this up inside the class defaults, we'll add the speaker. Perfect. And we'll change his text to be, I like keys. And we'll drag off from this, give him another dialogue line of what do you want. From here, we'll give the player two options. The first one being, can I get through the door? And the second one being goodbye. And then from the, can I get through this door? We're going to give Eric two options. No, this is my door. Go away and come back with something to trade. Perfect. And that's what his default response is going to be if you don't have a key. So on his top one, we'll just say what's going to happen if he has a key. So we'll say, ooh, a key. The door is yours. And that's it. If we hit that one, what we're going to do is we'll just play an event to open the door. And I'll just make sure that my door has a tag. So I've got Eric the doorman's door. And all we're going to do is pass the tag to here. And that should allow Eric to open the door. So in order for us to choose which text Eric should pick, we need to add a condition. So on the condition, that will choose for a player dialogue, whether it's visible or not. And for an NPC dialogue, whether it's called or not. Because NPC dialogue is called automatically. So we're now going to look into Narrative's quest system. This will allow us to progress through the dialogue and directly pick which dialogue path we want to go so when he says no go away and get something to trade we can begin the quest when we pick the key up that will complete the objective and tell us to go back and speak to eric and then when we speak to eric it can complete the quest when the door is open so in your content drawer here i'm going to go back to narratives folder and i'm going to create a new folder for quests and in here i'm going to create a new narrative quest and we'll call it quest blueprint eric the key requester and inside here, it's pretty straightforward. So we can get the quest and we can set the ID, which is the name of the quest. So I'm going to call it Eric's door. And in the description, this is what it'll say under the quest if you have a quest log or something like that. So now that we have our quest, we need to add objectives to it. The first objective we need once the quest starts is to find a key. So we need to create an object that's pick upable from narrative so we can get the key we need. So I'm going to go to the blueprints and I'm going to create a new folder called items and I'm going to create a simple blueprint actor and I'll call it BP but I'm going to call mine BPA which I'll explain in a minute pick up item so I've called it BPA for blueprint abstract abstract means we can't drag this class into the world because we don't want a generic pickup class dragged into the world we want specific classes so on the class settings advanced I'm going to tick abstract class and you'll notice I won't be able to drag this asset into the world nothing will happen that's abstract instead we will inherit from this and create specific pickups so inside the pickup class, I'm going to add a new sphere collision and I'll call this trigger point. This will be what you hit in order to pick it up. I'm going to expand it out to about 2.25. Then with your sphere trigger point collected, I'm going to scroll down to the events and hit on component begin overlap to add it in. I'm going to first cast it to my player like so, and then I'm going to get the player's narrative component from target. If you haven't set narrative up yet, please check the previous tutorial on how to set it up. From here, we can then do complete narrative task like so, and just link it all together. So what I'm gonna do from these two variables here is I'm gonna drag them off and click promote to variable on both of them. This will give us a super generic way to have a pickup that can complete a narrative task. Make sure to hit the two eyeballs. And you might be thinking, now this is good and all, but not every pickup will want to be completed by a narrative task, and that is true. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly drag these off to the side, and I'm gonna drag the task in, and I'm gonna call the is valid with the question mark function. That will give us a basically an if statement that we can say, if the variable is valid, has it been populated, then complete the narrative task. If it's not, then we can just destroy the actor because we've picked it up, and that that's why you'll handle your inventory pickup and stuff. So I'm going to create a function down here, right click add custom event, and I'm just going to call it destroy item. And from the is not valid, and I'm going to call the destroy item function, and I'm also going to do the same at the end here. So whether it completes the narrative task, it'll destroy it, or if it's not got a narrative task, it'll just destroy the item. Here you can add any add to inventory code or anything else you like. In the destroy item, you might be thinking we'll just come straight across and destroy self. 
However, we're going to inherit from this blueprint abstract class, so we can't specifically just delete itself, it'll leave all the children pending. So instead, I'm going to right click and do get attached actors. This will get us all the child actors of the current self. I'm going to turn this into a for loop, holding the F key and clicking. And then from here on the loop body, I'm just going to call destroy actor. And I'm going to pass in the array element. And then the final uncompleted, I'm just going to call destroy actor as well. And now every time we call destroy item, it'll destroy all the children of the item and then the item itself. So now we've got an item we can't drag out. So this is where we start creating our pickup. So I'm going to right click this item and choose create child blueprint class. And I'm going to call this blueprint key pickup. And now we can drag this one out, as you can see. One minor adjustment I'm going to make, I'm going to position the trigger so it's above ground. That way your, your key will always remain on the floor. So now we need to add the key object to this. So I have gone imported this free basic pickup set it comes with a bunch of different pickups that we can use and I want to use the little gem one. So I've imported this into Unreal already, as you can see here. I'm going to go into the levels and I'm going to open the showroom. Now that we have the items, I'm going to find the item that I want to use, which is this gem diamond one. I'm going to copy it, control C, and I'm going to jump back into our other map. And in our items, our key pickup, I'm going to simply paste it inside the trigger point like so and now we have our item sat right there so i can compile and save and as you can see we have our gem it looks okay it's a little bit small for my liking so i'm going to increase the scale and there we go we have a ridiculously large gem perfect so as you can see in the variables we have which task we want to complete and the argument however we don't have a task yet for picking up an item so we're going to create that because narrative works based on you giving it specific custom tasks and completing them in order to find out if an object can progress so inside narrative folder i'm going to create another folder called tasks and inside here, I'm going to go to narrative task. I'll call it NT get item. You can call this anything you want. And inside here, I'm just going to rename, rename everywhere it says NT get item to just get item. Perfect. And now that we've done that, you will be able to see in the task, we can now select NT get item or whatever you called it. And I'm going to call the argument. This is with the name of the item. And as you can see, I'm going to call this key. Now, every time we pick that up, it's going to complete the narrative task of key if a task is given to it. And we can try this out. If I run up to this item and collect it, it will disappear because we've collected it. And that has completed the narrative task. So next, we need to add a character so we can actually talk to him. There. I've shrunk him down and made him a little dwarf sized character with a red body. We can set his dialogue to be our new dialogue, Eric the door requester. So now that I have our character and we've assigned his dialogue, now we need to actually start and end the quest. So on your dialogue, when he says, go away and come back with something to trade, we're going to have add an event of begin quest, Eric the key requester, like so. On the ooh, the key is yours. I'm going to add a condition which says, have we completed a task? And the task will be get item and have we are uh, at the argument of key have we picked up a key so now we can come in and we can begin our quest perfectly and then once we get the key we can go back into it however we need to actually update the quest here so the first objective in the quest once that it starts is we need to get the item so i'm going to add a quest item node and i'm going to set the task to be get item and the item is key we need to go and get a key the description will be find a key for eric I'm going to set the description to Eric wants something to trade, see if you can find a key or something. And then the quest state is what's going to be added to your journal. So we can ignore that for now. After you've got the key, we need to talk to Eric again. So I'm going to drag off from here and I'm going to select the play dialogue node. The play dialogue node works by looking for every dialogue that is played inside narrative. And if you hit the correct one, then it will progress. So I'm going to delete quest state two and I'm going to instead drag off and do succeed the quest. So if we play this dialogue node, it will instantly complete the quest. And the node we want to complete is the one with Eric saying the door is yours. So I'm going to rename the ID to something more helpful. Eric, the key requested door open. And that's the node on the dialogue. So whichever node you want to complete the mission. And I'm going to come back into here and I'm going to set the node ID to be Eric, the key requested door open. Do not set the ID of the branch. It won't work. It's different. And I'll set the description to talk to Eric. Perfect. So let's see how far we've got now. So let's go and talk to Eric. He says, I like keys. What do you want? We say, open the door. He says, no, this is mine. Or go away and give us something to trade. 
And as you can see, the mission has now started. It wants us to find a key. So we'll find this gem. And yes, I know it's not a key. And I'm going to collect it. And there we go. Because we've picked it up, the quest has progressed. Talk to Eric again. So he will talk to Eric and he will say, what do you want? We'll say, open the door. And he will say, ooh, a key. The door is yours. And the door will open. Fantastic. As you can see, I didn't also really have a proper model. Perfect. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.